the band assisted front lever can be performed using a few different methods. In this video, I'll be discussing the options available to you and the pros and cons of each method. One option is to anchor the band under each hand and place it under your lower back or hips. This is the front lever equivalent of the technique I often use for the planche. For the tuck lever, you'll have to place the band under the lower back as the hips are flexed. For more extended postures, you can place it under the hips, under the curve in your lower back, or a combination of the two. The exact position doesn't matter much, as long as you're consistent, so you can accurately track progress. Having the band under the lower back will be more challenging than under the hips, as the assistance will be closer to the shoulder joint. It will also require more force from the abs and hip flexors to maintain a straight body position. While these options are great and easy to use on lower bars, they're not very useful for high bars. Another option that's useful for higher bars is to anchor the band between your hands and place one or both feet in it. This is great for extended postures, but not for tucked positions. Another limitation is that it won't challenge the abs or hip flexors as much as the previous options, as the band will help lift the feet. If the goal is to challenge the core, having the band under the lower back is preferred. If you have a strong core and want to challenge the shoulders, either method is fine. You can also use a hybrid of these methods with the band assisting under the feet as well as under the hips or lower back. In addition to isometric holds, these methods can be used to train front lever pull-ups and lever raises. With raises, having the band under the feet is helpful for the bottom half, whereas having the band under the hips or back is helpful for the top half. Another useful band assisted exercise is the L-sit to lever. This is a lever raise variation with variable resistance to better match the difficulty of the movement. This means there'll be less assistance at the bottom where not much is needed and more as you approach the lever. If you do raises with a straight body, there will be more assistance at the bottom where you don't want much and less assistance at horizontal where you require more. Ultimately, all of these methods are useful and effective for improving your lever. It doesn't matter which option you choose, but I encourage you to be consistent rather than chopping and changing between them so you can accurately track progress. When using bands, I recommend training just one level above what you can do unassisted. This way, you can practice the position you're working towards and help bridge the gap to the next level. As you get stronger, use progressively thinner bands. If you need more assistance, you can use multiple bands or manipulate the starting tension in the same band. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it helps your lever training. For my front lever guide and programs, as well as the equipment used in this video, check out the links in the description below.